Hey guys, what's going on? This is Matt here, and welcome back to the Black Ops 3 Mod Source tutorial series. So, in this video, is on how to actually play the sounds. And for once, we're actually starting in game, which is quite different. So, what I'm, what I'm basically going to be doing in this video is showing you guys three examples that I've sort of came up with. Um, what it, basically is it's playing a sound once, playing a sound on a loop, and also playing a sound at a location, okay? So, um, let's just leave these zombies away a moment so I can actually hear things. I just go up here. So play the sound. This sound. You can hear, you know, the, zomb the zombie hits me there as well. Uh, it plays the sound itself. It's actually playing the sound um, around that model. Okay, it's actually playing the sound on the model. If I go over here, place at place on that location. Sound. That's basically playing a sound at a specified location. So you know, at a coordinate, um, rather than just on the model itself. And you know, you know, you know they're only playing once. This is a test sound. Play the looping sound. Sound. And that, of course, you know, as you can hear, plays it on repeat. So let's go see how we actually do this. Okay, so we're over at Radium. Now, this is going to be, going to be quite a quick um, sort of section of this video. Uh, so, the way sounds are played is you can have it playing on an actual object itself, or you can have it sort of playing at a location, you know, on a player. You know, you can have it multiple ways. So, for this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to play it. Bit, by a trigger so you don't have to actually have it triggered by a you know by a play you could have it triggered by an event in game um or you know on like a wait time or something maybe but for this video i'm going to be just be playing a sound on a trigger so what we're doing is when the player goes up to each one of these triggers it's going to play the sound okay in one you know in one of three different ways so this one is going to, it's going to play a single sound um on this object so on this um, you know around this this one it's going to play it again on this object but it's going to play it in a loop and this one it's going to not play it on the object at all but it's going to play it at, at, a, uh, at a coordinate okay so for this all i've done is i've gotten the objects you know in, in these two cases it will be playing on these objects i've just got the object itself which is just, you know a model um i've remapped it to a script model by doing script and script model here okay and all i've done is i've given it a target name okay sound trigger um, object and the actual trigger itself is just a trigger use. So it's down here under, if I can find it, under trigger. And you see we've got trigger use, okay? So all it is, it's called a trigger use. It's going to be called sound trigger. And sound trigger is going to play the sound on sound trigger object. Same thing for this, except I've just got the, the word loop in there, just so I can sort of tell the difference. Okay, just to kind of, you know, separate them from each other. And this one is just it's purely just the actual trigger itself because I want to play out a location. This scripts model doesn't have a tagging name. It's not actually being it's not being used for anything other than just being there so we can see that you know that there's something there. So let's head over to the actual scripts and sort of see how this all works. So close down radium. Go over to your Black Ops 3 root directory, over to user maps, your map name, scripts, and ZM. You'll find your map name.gsc. Let's open up that. So all I've done is I've threaded three different functions. Okay, now I will leave a download link in the description to this actual code. It won't be this entire file; it just be the actual code itself, so you guys can kind of you know see it firsthand, uh, and you know, you guys can sort of see how it works in your own maps maybe. And now there are loads, loads, loads more ways to play sounds. Um, you know, like loads more different sort of use cases. And um, it really is specific to how you want to be playing it, but the method which we play it by are all quite similar okay so in terms of how you actually will be playing it it's quite similar um it's just kind of you know how you activate it which you know there'll be lots of different variations of this so for this as i said i've you know i've threaded three three functions and um, this one of course is the one which we had the trigger which targeted you know which was playing the sound on that uh, object on that model and um, this one is the same one but except it's going to be, it's going to be playing it on a loop um that's the only difference between those two really it's, this was playing it on a loop uh, and this one's not taking into account any model it's just playing at a location so let's kind of go through these so we've got the trigger itself we're going to get the entity of you know the kvp sound trigger which of course is the actual trigger itself the trigger use and it's going to also get the entity of the, of the object okay so as we call you know as we name the model sound trigger um, object here so obj and all I've done here is I've set the hint string so when you go up to the actual trigger, it you know it tells you something. Uh, we've removed the icon. Usually I think it's like a little hand icon, 
hand icon, hand icon, sorry, that they normally is. Uh, we're just going to basically set it so there's nothing there. And now we're just going to wait for the actual trigger to be triggered, okay? Um, this one is the exact same, okay? Um, except, you know, there's different uh, target names because, you know, we can't call it all the same thing, you know, it's doing you know, two different jobs. Now, here's where it actually, you know, actually gets different. So, uh, we're going to play the sound. Now, in this case, we wanted to play the sound once and play it on this object. You know, we have to play the sound on something. So we go, we're playing it on the object. Um, and to do this, we're just going to do the object name, which, you know, we got from up here. We're going to play it and we're just going to play sound with the sound name itself. Now, the sound name we get from the CSV. Um, I've gone ahead and created another entry in the CSV. We did this in the last video where we actually set up the sound. Um, I believe we did a looping sound. I think it was a 2D looping sound. Um, I've set up another one, which is the same thing, except it's non-looping now, okay? That's the only difference. Um, I've set up two different ones, one looping, one non-looping. Um, and the only difference is, of course, the actual name. And just so I can tell the difference, I've put underscore looping at the end. That's the only difference there. Uh, we just created, you know, an extra entry, um, even though it's still using the same file name. It's just a few properties that we've changed. So, yeah. So, I'm going to be playing the sound. So, YouTube sound through play sound in this other one we're actually playing youtube sound looping here and the difference is we play loop sound so instead of play sound we now play loop sound because we want the looping sound okay so that those you know those are like the two differences between playing on an object now what happens if we don't have an object maybe we want to just play out a location now of course you know you don't have to have an object specifically like a model you could play it on the actual player you, know, you could play it on the player themselves that's that you know that's one thing you could do so to play it on the player all you would do is at the end of trigger you do comma player okay so it's gonna wait for the trigger and the player which basically activates it it's gonna play it on that player so all i would do for this is i would have replaced that with player like that okay so it's gonna wait for the player to trigger the trigger and then it's gonna play this sound this looping sound on the player so just undo that though, because we don't want to do that right now. So I'll just exit this. Okay, so that's playing sounds on an actual object, okay, via, you know, like, you know, waiting for the trigger to be activated. So what happens if we want to be played at, at a position? Um, it's actually pretty much the same thing. Um, you go place play sound at position. Obviously give it the actual sound name from the CSV. And here's your coordinates. So go into Radiant, find the coordinates of where you want it to be played, and simply just put it in here. So X, Y, and Z, and simply just play it at, at a location. Now, I believe that when you're playing sound at position, um, I believe you can't do a looping sound. Um, I think that's correct. So if you do have any problems, um, the way I personally got around that, so I wanted to have a looping sound of rain, playing you know 2d so globally around the entire map now logically i'd play the sound i'd play a rain sound which is looping at this position right i'd play it just anywhere um but that didn't work so what i did was instead i put a model underneath the map um you know so it couldn't be seen and i just played it on that so if it doesn't play at your position because as i said if it is a looping sound um my workaround for that was just to play it on a model underneath the map okay Hopefully that is a pretty suitable way to do it. Um, it's the only way I could possibly think of doing it, doing it at least. So if that's what you're trying to achieve, that there, there was my solution. Um, simply just playing it straight away. So, you know, playing it without any trigger, just playing it straight away. So yeah, um, as I said, I'll leave a download link in the description for this file, um, which will hopefully help you guys out there. Um, yeah, see, you know, see, see what you guys can come up with really. As I said, you know, there's too many ways to, to show specifically how to play it because it's you know it's different for each use case but there's a there's three you know there's three examples of how you could be doing it so hopefully this has helped if you do have any questions please leave them in the comment section below but other than that um yeah i'll see you guys in the next video bye for now